Hello guys, it's Johnny time and welcome to another smart contract hacking tutorial. In this video, we're gonna solve the first challenge in them vulnerable D5 version 4, the foundry version, which is unstoppable. So without further ado, let's get started. By the way, if you missed my first video in the series, check it out. It's a complete tutorial about the vulnerable D5 version 4 and how to get started and approach the exercises. So this is the first exercise, Unstoppable. There is a tokenized vault with a million DVT tokens deposited. It's offering flash loans for free until the grace period ends. So there is some kind of grace period. To catch any bugs before going 100% permissionless, the developers decided to run a live beta in testnet. There is a monitoring contract to check liveness of the flash loan feature. Starting with 10 DVD tokens in balance show that it's possible to hold the vault it must stop offering flash loans. So our objective is to hold the vault and make sure that it stops offering flash loans. This is the readme file and we have two smart contracts, unstoppable monitor and unstoppable vault. So I'm just gonna take a look at the vault because this is the contract that we need to break and stop it from offering flash loans. And it's essentially, it has some imports from Open Zeppelin and Solidity and Solmet uh, libraries. It implements some uh, interfaces and inherits some contracts contracts, flash loan lender, reentry C guard, owned ERC4626 and possible. It has some constants like fee factor, grace period and so on. Uh, but I just want to just jump into the real deal and I want to go to the flash loan function and start from there. So here we go. So this is the function that anyone can call. It's an external function and request a flash loan. It receives the receiver, the token, the amount and the data, I guess, for the callback of the flash loan. It does some sanity checks that the amount uh, is not zero. It makes sure that the address of the asset is the token. So it only offers certain tokens to a flash loan and it gets the balance before by calling the total assets function. It has some state variable called total supply and it pass it to the function convert to share and then it compares it to the balance before. So it makes sure that it equals, these two values are equals or it will revert the transaction and not allow to take the flash loan. Then it transfers the tokens to the receiver, the amount that he requested. It takes the flash loan fee and if it fails to do the callback, it reverts with callback fails, but here it does calls this function on flash loan on the receiver with all the data and it expects it to return this value of this hash of this selector of this function. Eventually it used safe transfer from to get the fee and the amount back from the receiver. So the receiver need to approve this flash loan smart contract after he does the callback in this on flash loan function. He needs to approve this contract to spend this token so this contract can transfer it or it will revert. And then it essentially transfers the fee to the fee recipient. So our goal is to break this function and make sure that no one can request flash loans anymore. So which condition here can we break always, not depending on the values here that are passed to the function for anyone, right? Because we want this to revert. This is essentially how we block people from using it. And the only thing that we can actually do here that is not dependent on the input values like amount or the token is essentially this one, right? This if statement. So it compares the total supply to the balance before. And if it's not exactly the same, it reverts the transaction whatsoever, no matter who calls it with which parameters. If these two, param two values do not equal, then this will break. So we need to understand what is this total assets function where it's taking the value from, what is this total supply state variable, and what is this convert to share functions and see if somehow we can break this condition. Okay, so let's start with balance before, which is essentially the value that returns from total assets function, which is over here. And this is very straightforward. It essentially just calls the balance of this address, the assets of this address, which is the amount of tokens that this smart contract has at this point. Essentially the balance of the token of this exact flash loan vault smart contract. The other one is convert to share with total supply. 
Total Supply is the totally minted ERC20 tokens. So it's a standard of ERC20 tokens state variable. And then it passes it to this shares function, convert to shares, which is the ERC4626 volts function. And this is essentially a way to convert the supply to shares with tokenized volts with this 4626 standardization. And we just need to break these two uh, variables. And essentially, the way to break these variables is just directly sending some tokens to the smart contract because that way we create a discrepancy between this uh, retrieval of this value of balance of address this and this total supply of the ERC20 tokens that ever well minted converted to shares. So just by sending some tokens to this vault, we can essentially make sure that we have this accounting discrepancy and that this if statement does not, this condition does not hold and everyone that is going to call this function, it will encounter this revert of invalid balance. And this is what we want to do. We want to create a denial of service attack for this smart contract. Uh, and therefore, the exploit is pretty straightforward and simple. All we have to go do is just scroll down here and transfer one uh, DVT token to the vault. So just token dot transfer and we're just going to pass the address of the vault and we just need to pass one way that's supposed to be enough because essentially by transferring this token to this DVD token to the vault, uh, it's just going to mess up with the balance of the tokens and these two values are not going to be the same. So anyone that is going to call this function, it will be reverted. All right. So once we completed our exploitation, which is pretty simple, it's the first exercise. What did you expect? Uh, we can go over to the terminal and just run the test. So forge test match path unstoppable t dot sol. We're going to run it. It's going to be pretty fast because it's foundry and we can see that all the tests pass, which means that we completed the first damn vulnerable D5 version for challenge. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. If you like it, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel and follow the playlist for the next challenges and follow for more awesome Web3 security content. Thank you so much and we'll see you in the next one.